<laughs> Had a bad hair day. <clears throat> Representative Bradley on out. Uh, thank you, members of the committee. It's a little different sitting out here. I appreciate your indulgence. Um, over the course of this summer, in conjunction with the... Uh, Excuse me, Representative Bradley. I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt. Um, Representative Curry moves to adopt House Amendment Number 3 to Senate Bill 397. And on that, Representative Bradley. Thank you. Thank you. So over the course of the summer, uh, in conjunction with the Illinois Senate, we had joint revenue meetings um, in an attempt to try to create some kind of uh, reform of the Illinois taxing system. In the course of having those hearings, we had some specific timing issues that came forward. We had originally intended to take action in the spring. But we had some legislative pressures that came forward with the uh, situation involving two long standing Illinois corporations, uh, specifically Sears and the uh, Mercantile Exchange. Uh, there was a proposal that came out a few weeks ago that was presented in this committee and which Representative Harris and I, along with other members of the committee, felt um, needed more time to review, to take apart, uh, and to put back together. So over the course of the last um, few weeks during the holidays, uh, this committee, in consultation with the Senate, Senator Hutchison uh, participated in at least one of the hearings, has been working uh, diligently, um, deliberately, to try to come up with a bipartisan uh, economic package uh, which, which would address um, the concerns of the loss of jobs in the state of Illinois, but would also provide some balance and fairness um, to the system and would not um, simply be um, a bill that did not take into account the needs of small businesses as well as working men and women in the state. So as a result of negotiations, as a result of these hearings, as a result of substantial efforts on the parts of many people, um, we have crafted uh, House Committee Amendment Number 3, um, which Representative Harris and I um, had agreed to um, during the week of Thanksgiving, which we think uh, creates a balanced approach to trying to deal with this issue. So this is an important piece and it's very important um, that this, this not be overlooked. There is no fiscal impact on FY12. Part of this legislation and is specifically set forth in the language of the legislation that the surplus that the state is currently expecting in FY12, in part due to the efforts of this committee, is going to go towards the payment of the backlog of bills. So whatever that number is, whether it be 250 or 800 million, depending on who you talk to, FY12 surplus will be going towards the payment of back bills. In addition, we wanted to create a, create a proposal and craft a proposal going forward that did not consume uh, the entire amount of projected revenue growth or the entire amount of available revenues so that we would in the future be able to dedicate a significant amount of resources surplus to the payment of back bills in the future. That is contained in this legislation. It should not be overlooked. So the total amount of the package is $250 million, roughly. The way that we arrived at that, the original proposal uh, proposed to decouple uh, the bonus depreciation in the 12th month of this year. Well, it would be the 12th month by the time it happened. Businesses within Illinois have budgeted, they have, um, they have bought equipment, they have taken significant actions within the state on the basis that the bonus depreciation would be in effect. The bonus depreciation uh, expires next year uh, if left alone and, and left to its own accords. Rather than decouple, rather than decouple, change the rules in the 12th hour of this calendar year, we determined that by simply letting it run its course, that there would be about $250 million come back on the books that could be dedicated to this package. 
That's how we arrived at the $250 million. The other part of that is by doing that, natural revenue growth and additional revenue and resources that come in as a result of this package or anything else for the state of Illinois can be dedicated to paying a backlog of bills. And when this committee sets forth in the next few weeks and months in order to try to create a fiscal number for next year, to do revenue estimates for next year, it's vitally important that we keep in mind the context of what we're doing here today. So this would be a net wash for the state. We're going to have an additional $250 million, and that's the amount of this package. And that's why we've limited to this, and that's why we've attempted to cap it at this, not just in fiscal year one, but for the most part in fiscal years going forward. So.